Yo, yo, yo. How's everybody doing? Back again, episode six. Episode six. Life and basketball. everybody doing? Again, I am Carvel Bailey. I am the president and CEO of Bless the Ball Skill Development Academy. We are full year round, full service skill development company where we enhance and increase your skills, be it physical, mental, social, emotional, psychological, uh, spiritual, and we do all those things through our vehicle of basketball. That's what we do. So that's who this show is sponsored by. Um, coming live from Bless the Ball Studios right now. And today we will be talking attitude. Attitude of leaders. That's what we'll be talking about. Pardon me. So now. As always, this show, what this show is, we take basketball, real basketball life principles, and we add them and make them fit into real life situations and real life principles. So I'm not sure who's on right now, but, you know, if you're on, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart, uh, type, you know, where you're coming from, you know, where you're viewing this at, uh, share this information. Um, push the share button right now so that you can share with other people that may need it, people that may not be able to witness and view this right now, but they can see it later, okay? Because we always say each one teach one, but we can't teach one if we're not reaching one. And then once we reach them and attempt to teach them, then it's up to them to be able to apply the information and knowledge that they have learned. So share this with somebody. Invite somebody to this broadcast, and we'll go from there. <clears throat> and so always, we always launch our program from this book. All right, this book is my book, right? Understanding Life Through the Game of Basketball, A Guide to Effective Leadership and Coaching. And I always like to say the, the second part because people always ask, is this a book that's going to help me play basketball? Uh, probably not physically, but it will help you play basketball um, mentally and more so will help you to become a better leader. So be it if you're in whatever, you know, business, if you're in education, uh, if you're in the service field, um, if, if you're evangelical, you know, whatever it is that you may do, a teacher, a coach, Whatever it is, this will help you in your leadership and coaching qualities, life coach, whatever it may be. That's what this book gives you strategies and, you know, just helps you see things from a different point of view, from a from a coach's point of view, but also to combine it in with life. OK, because not only have I been a basketball coach, but I've also been an educator for um probably 24 years now. So it's a combination of both. And so we always launch from this book, always give you an excerpt, and then we kind of go from there and move on. So we will get into it right now. All right, the first thing that a leader needs to have is a high character pulse. Okay, so above anything, leaders have to have character. Leaders have to have character. Then it says another part of leadership qualities um, is that they must have charisma and a positive attitude. The attractions they draw from others are oftentimes magnetic, yet the influence that they seem to have on others can be inspiring. Okay, so they have to be charismatic and have a great attitude with character have to have that if you're going to be a leader. Okay, you can't have poor character and expect people to follow you. And what does charisma do? Right, it 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 shows that you're 
transparent also. It shows that you are a person. You know, you like what you do. And, you know, that's a, a integral part of your attitude. And so to get further into it, attitude is something that can get misconstrued from time to time because everyone has bad moments. Yet having a consistent positive attitude is a great quality of a true leader. Your attitude ranks higher than your self-knowledge. It doesn't matter how smart or intelligent a coach or leader is. If they have a piss poor attitude, they will not be able to lead anyone. All right. So I'm going to read that over. It says, it doesn't matter how smart or intelligent a coach or a leader is. If they have a piss poor attitude. They would not be able to lead anyone because it's an old saying. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So no matter what you're doing, well, how much you may know, if someone feels as though it's all about you and that you don't really care about them as people, right? And that goes back to one of my first shows about understanding and, you know, treating people as individuals, all right? Not as a number, but treating them as individuals. And then lastly, I want to touch on this point here. It says competence is vital in leadership because people have to know that you know what you're doing before they will follow you. We just touched on that. Highly competent people repetitively search for ways to keep getting educated, growing and improving. They do this by asking and finding out the most important question in development. Why? OK, why? I once read that the person who knows why will eventually become the boss while the person who knows how will always have a job. The person who wants to know why will always own the company. The person that just wants to know how will always have a job or be the employer. I'm going to say that one last time. You have to get to the point to where you're not asking, how do I do this? Or you're not asking, what do I do? How can I do this? What can I do? You want to get to the point to where you're asking with anything that you're doing, why? Why am I doing this? Why do you want me to do this? Okay, why can I do this as opposed to why can't I? And when you do that, you will always be at the, the upper echelon. So the person that knows and understands why will eventually be the boss, the leader, or own the company. The people that just, you know, know and understand what and how will always be the employee. So when we talk about leadership and talk about attitude and being able to have um, um, charisma, you have to give people something that they want to follow. Because with basketball, you know, if I'm recruiting a basketball player, they're going to come play for me more so than for that school. So I have a little leg up as opposed to now if we're in the business sector. Most people are going to that job because they need income. So there's no real relationship that has been built or made so that basketball player may follow me because they've already built that that relationship and is growing but in the business side in real life you know have you really built a rapport or relationship with your leader or your superior oftentimes no so if that boss doesn't have charisma and a good attitude it's going to be hard for people to say, hey, I want to follow this person. And then more so, as I said, good leaders, they, they're constantly in search of knowledge. They're constantly in search of learning. Good leaders don't mind learning from somebody else. And I said this in, uh, again, one of my other shows. If you're a leader, you should be learning from those in which you are leading just as much as the people that you are leading are learning from you. 
So if you're a boss, if you're a supervisor, if you're a coach, even if you're a captain, people should be learning from you just as much as you're learning from them. But why would they want to learn from you if you have limited knowledge? And if you're not constantly searching for knowledge, how can I get better? Who can I learn from? How can I learn this? Why am I learning this? Goes back to that why, right? Why is this going to help me be a better leader? And see, believe it or not, we can learn from poor leaders. We can learn from, from, from poor habits, poor judgments. We can learn from everything. You know, I remember back in the day, you know, I used to watch um, the video channel. Donnie Simpson back in the day. I, I might be showing my age with that, okay? Um, but Donnie Simpson, you know, used to always say, shoot for the moon. If you miss, at least you'll be amongst the stars. Well, that means that you have to, like, having your mind, have your mind made up, that you're going to the top. That's the same way in, in, in education. You have to want to aspire to learn as much as you can, get as much knowledge as you can. Because when you get the knowledge, then you can give it back to people. And then when you know what you're talking about, people will gravitate towards you. Even if you're not deemed the leader. They will gravitate to you more than they will the leader, right? I mean, who's ever been on a sports team? Who's ever been in, in, in business in real life? And you've kind of gravitated more towards somebody who wasn't really your leader or captain or boss than you did that person that was the actual leader, that was coined the leader. Because someone else has done their due diligence to learn as much as they can, and then they're helping you. See, because when we learn, we can be of value to somebody else. We can provide value to other people. And when we provide value, then people want to know what more can we give them. How can you help me? Well, we help people because people helped us. And then we help people because that makes us better. So that's what I wanted to launch from today, just you know, talking about character, charisma, and attitude. And you know, charisma and attitude kind of goes hand in hand because I haven't really seen a lot of people with low charisma that have great attitudes. And most people that have good attitudes have a lot of charisma. You know, the person is always smiling, you know, always joking, always in, in, in a great mood, just make people feel good when they're around them. So it, it kind of goes hand in hand. So as a leader, that's what we need to have. That's what we need to strive for. Those are the things that, that we need to look for in leaders. And at times, you know, you can't be so bashful to where just because someone isn't a leader, you aren't willing to give a little bit of advice, even if it's advice on how they can better serve you. OK, even if it's advice on how they can better serve you or, or what would make you gravitate towards them. You, you know, I've had basketball players that have literally told me, like, coach, I need you to stay on my butt. You know, I understand that, you know, you're trying to be reserved and everything, but your passion drives me to play hard. So when you sit down or when you're trying to woosa, OK, I can't find everything in my body and my loins to be the best individual that I can be. Well, that helped me because it, it, it got me to understand how to deal with that particular individual. Because there's no cookie cutter. You know, when you're a leader, you know, another thing that, that makes great leaders, you, you know, I spoke about it already, but you have to treat everybody as an individual. You know, you can have a standard of how things are, but you can't treat person A like you treat person B. You know, you have to be able to treat everybody fair. And, you know, what works for one person may not work for another person. So you have to be able to understand your population. 
understand your personnel. For those that have been following me for these six shows, you know, it seems like I've been kind of talking, you know, some of the same things. Well, basketball is universal. So is leadership, really. You know, you can be taught how to play basketball. You can be taught how to be in leadership. Now, I personally think that like leaders are made. You have to have something in you that makes you a leader, that makes you want to say, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to get others to come with me. But like leadership sometimes, you know, because all leaders may not be good with leadership because they just do it. You know, it's the difference. You can lead by example. You can lead by words, communication. It's different type of leadership styles. And next show, I will get into that. It's three different type of coaching styles that I spoke about in my first chapter, transformative leadership. Okay, I will speak on that um, Tuesday on my next show. But just because someone is a leader doesn't mean that they totally understand leadership. The same way we have people in leadership that are not leaders. Just because someone puts you in leadership doesn't make you a leader. And all the while we have those true leaders that haven't been elevated to leadership. Yet they're leaders because they lead by example. Because they govern themselves. So those are the things that we're talking about. And as I always do, you know, I have three points that I always touch on. And that's basically it. You know, if anybody has any questions, please type them in the chat. Um, it's definitely an interactive show. You know, if you have a question, put them in the chat. I will definitely answer it. That kind of gets me going, keeps me going to, you know, just think of different things that maybe I may not be saying based on that particular topic. So the first thing that I want to talk about today, all right, three C's today, three C's. My three points are all C's. The first is captain, okay? You can be a captain of a team. And I always have said that I've never made my best players captains of my teams. And why is that? Because just because you're the best basketball player doesn't mean people will follow you. Just because you're the best basketball player doesn't mean that you have influence on the team. And another reason is because most of the better players on a team, unless they're kind of brought into themselves early on and understanding their role with the team, most superior players just think that they're better because they know that they're better, right? So they just think, now, just because I'm a better player, I'm a better person, like I'm better than you. And that's having a poor attitude and probably no charisma. So nobody's going to follow them. And then coaches have a hard time, like, man, I need my captain to do this. And then it's like, okay, we have a civil war going on with the team because no one wants to follow them. It's almost like a, a, a um, reality TV show, you know, where people, you know, have to get people on their team and, you know, they, they're trying to build, um, you know, networks up and, you know, people that are going to ride with them and roll with them so that they can vote somebody else off, you know, those type of things. That's kind of how it works a lot of times in locker rooms when coaches promote the best player or a certain position, right, quarterback or whatever. But we're talking basketball, so oftentimes say it's like point guard. When coaches promote that best player to captain, and they're not captain material, what happens is you have civil war inside the locker rooms. And then coaches are wondering all season why they haven't been able to get maximum potential and maximum efficiency out of their players. That's because you're asking someone to lead the rest of these guys that don't nobody like. 
And the only reason that they like him is because that person can put the ball in the basket or jump real high and they win basketball games for us. And because they win basketball games for us, then it makes me, it gives me a little bit of credibility because now I'm walking around with that Letterman's jacket or I'm walking around with, you know, my uniform on or people know I'm on the basketball team. So maybe I'll get some, you know, girlfriends or maybe the teacher might be lenient if I come in class late or whatever, you know, because I'm on the basketball team. And that's because one or two people are really carrying us, but we don't really like them and we sure not going to follow them. But on the other hand, if you have a captain that may not be the best player, but they work hard. I mean, we talk about leaders are made. That person that may not be the best player, but that person is going to do everything right the way that they're supposed to do. And then people are just going to gravitate because of that charisma. Got a good attitude, good character. Right. I'm going to follow them. Now, when that person turns around and be and does open their mouth, be like, come on, man, we need to play harder. Everybody gonna be like, whoa, he talks, right? Like, he talks. Maybe we need to listen to him. That's why I've always named, and it, and it, and it doesn't have to be, you know, the worst player, definitely, but I always look and I observe. I never name a captain really until, like, the season officially starts because from a college level, you know, it's always we have our preseason conditioning and then we have when the season officially starts with practice. Right. And I name my captain at that point because I want to see during conditioning who's going to. Who who are people going to gravitate towards? Who are people going to look at and say he's doing it right? She's doing it right. And I don't mind following them. That's the person that I always name my captains, even in high school, never the best player. Now, sometimes you may get the best player that is just born a, a leader and understand leadership qualities. Because, again, I would say eight times out of ten, that person that may not be the best player, but the best leader, they understand why they have to work so hard. They understand why they're playing basketball. They understand why the plays or whatever the coaches and staff are doing, why they're having them do those things. That's why they always be the leader. On the other hand, maybe that best player, he just understand what? I know what I got to do. Put the ball in the basket. <laughs> Stop somebody on defense. Like, I know what I have to do. So, when you're dealing with captains, understand even when in the business sector, you know, when you have that leader, just because that person has been working for that company for 14, 15 years, that does not make them the leader. They may know a little bit more, may have a little bit more experience. But are they tainted? Or, you know, like, can they get somebody to where they want to go. And then in the business sector, you may get somebody that I'm, you know, at a certain level, but I'm not going to teach somebody what I know because I don't want them to get to my level because I know that they, you know, may have more charisma, a better attitude. And, 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 you know, they just have that it about them that once they know more than me, they're going to take my spot. See, it ain't about let's make the company better. It's about they're going to take my spot. So that person that has more years, yeah, they may get an increase in salary, increase in income, but that doesn't make them the supervisor just because you've been working for 20 years. So now I'm going to make you the supervisor and you, you ain't led yourself in 18 years. For real? So that's why we have to be real cognizant when we label someone when we have the power to label someone leader we have to really pay attention to why we're they go that word again that why why we're naming them leader so that's my first point my second point is coach three c's right captain coach same way you can have that coach just with a tremendous attitude oh they love everybody they love everybody. 
but they just may not know how to get themselves out of a man-to-man -man defense to save their life. They may not know how to draw a play up or nothing, but they're great people. Does that mean that that coach, should that, co should that person be the coach of that team? Should they be the leader? You know, I, I ref now also, right? So you know, I see a lot of volunteer coaches, you know, in the spring programs, you know, for AAU. You get a lot of these coaches who may have never coached before. Maybe they want to coach their kid or, you know, maybe they say, hey, coach, let me do it. You know, whoever the owner of the program is, whatever, let me do it. But they may not be a leader. You know, just because you can get on the sideline and you can, you know, hoop and holler and scream, you know, and I always, you know, convict myself now that I'm, you know, on the other side as well. I look and, you know, it kind of put me in check a little bit. Like, I hope I wasn't this way when I was coaching. And I know I was, right? Because my wife used to always say, like, you know, stop hollering all the time. So I try to correct myself now, you know, and again, you learn from what you think is positive and negative. And I know it's made me a better coach by just seeing some of the things that other people do that I say, man, I would never do that again. So, you know, just because someone is a coach doesn't mean that they're ready to be a coach. Doesn't mean that they can lead. And then on the flip side, I, I said a couple of weeks ago, too, that, you know, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to get in a different room. Right. So even today, we talked about leaders constantly searching for knowledge. A good head coach or a good coach has somebody with them on their staff that knows just as much or more about something than they do. They know a little bit more about something than the head coach does because the coach can't know everything about everything. So from a coaching standpoint, can you put yourself in position to hire or be around more people that know something more than you? Okay. Like, you, you know, my, um, you know, coaching staff when, when I was on the college ranks, because when I was in high school, I was basically the only coach on the sophomore level as the varsity assistant. You know, I was the assistant, but I kind of just played the background, you know, and let the head coach and the assistant coach do their thing. And I was just there for, you know, advice or, you know, if they needed me to chime in, would do that. And then I would work with the players kind of, you know, on my own. But when I got to the college level, you know, I had coaches on my staff that knew more about, let's say, first aid and stretching and, you know, all of the, the different polymetric techniques than I did. Then I had another coach that, you know, kind of knew more about community building and bonding and um, being able to, you know, do and set up like volunteer um, events for us. Okay, because as a as a coach and as a leader, you you have to be able to delegate also. So you can't delegate if you know everything about everything. But if you have people that know a little bit more about this or that than you do, well, now you can delegate and say, okay, well, this is what you do and you're good at it. This is what you do and you're good at it. I know what I do and I'm good at it. So now we have a team. That's how it works, people. I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm going to get somebody that's great in their lane. Somebody else is great in their lane. Maybe somebody else is great in their lane. And we're going to run this ship together. Because, again, as the leader, I understand why I need to have person A, B, C, and sometimes D. Because it's going to make us that much better. Even from, you know, a manager standpoint, you know, I had to have managers that were, were more charismatic about doing certain things than I was. 
because that made us that much better together. And then the third C is CEO. All right, everybody wants to be a CEO, or at least you should want to be. I Meaning everybody want to be a boss. Or nowadays, you should want to be a mogul, right? Because the CEO, a boss, and a mogul are three different things. But as the CEO, if the CEO is not knowledgeable about, you know, what he's knowledgeable about, if he or she doesn't have any knowledge, right, who's going to want to work for them other than people that see that person as an opportunity to get over or an opportunity for, you know, advancement, right? I'm going to go work for Coach Bailey right, as the CEO of Bless the Ball Skill Development Academy because I know that he knows nothing about coaching or leadership. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to shine bright and I'm going to take over and I'm going to have a company and then I'm going to, you know, take everything that he's put in place and I'm going to blow it up and make it my own. Opportunistic. You set yourself up. If you're the CEO and you have no knowledge about what it is that you're doing and what it is that you do, you know, even if, you know, you have lawyers, if you have uh, accountants, if you have employees, right, um, people that run different departments, you should know everything that they're doing. You may not know as much, but you have an idea of what's going on. Because, you know, let's just take a uh, CEO of McDonald's. The CEO of McDonald's has to know how the fries work, how the grill works, how the cash register works, how the drive through works, how the ice cream machine works. They have to know all of that. And I'm saying ice cream machine, and my daughter always say whenever she go to McDonald's, right, like if she just wants ice cream, like they, ice cream never works, right? And then, you know, she met somebody and say, like, it does work, but they always say it don't. That's a whole other story. But the CEO of McDonald's has to know how everything works, now, they may not know the little trick of the person, again, that's been there for five years. Well, hey, you know, with the fries, we know that we can take get one basket going. We can put the other basket on and, and we can put it down. Right. So now the CEO may know how they do that or see that being done. And, you know, but that person has been working there for five years, been doing that and, and increases production. They understand why they do that. Like I'm going to cook one basket, another basket, because at at 245, when school get ready to let out, right, we're going to get jam packed. So we got to have production rolling. So they understand why. The CEO may just know, like, you know, I know why we need fries, why we need this type of grease, but they may not know why they cook them the certain way that they cook them to be able to get results faster. But that CEO has to have, you know, a good attitude to be able to go to that person and say, you know, why y'all putting them two things on there? You know, I, I've been seeing you do it for two weeks, you know, and it, it and it's been working. We've been able to get the kids out of here. But why exactly do you do it? Well, we put the one basket on top of the other one that it compresses. So the bottom one gets done at half the time and then we can put another one in and another one. So now fries are cooking in half the time in which they normally may cook. So we're able to double our production. Oh, OK. Makes sense. Great. I'm going to give you a raise. And that's being done because they understand the people that they're dealing with. So you can have a CEO with bad attitude. You can have a CEO with a good attitude. You can have a coach with a bad attitude. You can have a coach with a good attitude. You can have a captain with a bad attitude, a captain with a good attitude. But the bottom line serves the same for all three of these C's. They have to, one, have good character, and then they have to have a good attitude. And part of the subcategory of that good attitude is being charismatic, having charisma wanting people to want to follow them because regardless how many fries you cook at McDonald's, and I'm just using McDonald's today, okay? Regardless how many fries that you can cook, if you don't like that CEO, 
You know, you're like, man, psh, what up, man? These people can wait. Because now you co you're coming in with a bad attitude because attitudes are contagious. You ever heard that? Attitudes are contagious. Is yours worth catching? So as a leader, if I come in with a poor attitude, everybody under me is going to have a poor attitude. As a coach, if I got a poor attitude, the player's going to have a poor attitude. At some point in time, I have to, even if I'm mad, Right. And I got an attitude. I have to know how to motivate and turn it to where they're a little bit better to where they can understand again, you know, like what I want them to do and then why I need them to do it. And I have to be but I have to be able to understand each person, because even if I have a bad attitude, I have to know my personnel. So I may be able to come in and, and tell my captain, listen, I'm not having a good day. I'm going to say what I got to say one time and I need you to echo it and get everybody together. Because, see, that's delegating, too. So now when we're talking about a coach and a CEO, they have to do the same thing. They have to, the coach has to be to come in and, and tell their assistants, like, listen, this is what's going on. Relay it to the captain. The captain got to be able to, you know, tell us, listen, man, gra grab four or five people. This is what we're going to do today so that it's no problem. You now you see teams huddle up, you know, at the, uh, at, at, at the free throw line, like after a foul or whatever. They're echoing and getting a game plan in place. That's leadership. The coaches have to have leadership. That CEO, if, if you're in charge of your department, you know you can't do it all by yourself. So sometimes you have to delegate and you know you might have to go to the person in the office next to you or the cubicle next to you and say, listen, I need you to be able to back me up. Or I need you to be able to take care of this because all of this has to be done and we have to have it done in this amount of time. Because at the end of the day, they say BS flows downhill. So they're coming for you as the leader. Well, what happened? You know, I had a, 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 a supervisor tell me a long time ago, you know, he was a coach too. He said, man, if my AD ever fired me, I'm going to ask him for five minutes before he fired me. He said, in them five minutes, I'm going to go fire everybody on my staff. <laughs> he said, because y'all got me fired. So if you're going to fire me, I'm going to fire everybody. So at the end of the day, it's coming down on the leader. But if the leader wasn't able to delegate and put things in place for the people under him or her, then ultimately, those individuals didn't do what was supposed to be done because that leader didn't delegate and properly plan it out and show and teach. So now the leader is mad at the people under them, but whoever is the final call, right? They're mad at that leader. So it flows downhill. And if something happens to the CEO, what happens? The owner of that business fires the CEO. You ever seen, you know, a couple years ago, Rutgers, right? And coach hitting the players and doing all that, right? You know what happened at Rutgers? The coach got fired first. And then the same day, and I got the ESPN thing, you know, on my phone. Go up, dun, 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 dun. I was sitting at my desk. The coach gets fired. And I'm like, here we go. Went off again. The AD got fired. A couple hours later, it went off again. The president got reassigned. So all three people lost their job, but it trickles downhill. So when 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 those things when when that thing with Rutgers got on the news, you know the president got a phone call. Hey man, listen, this is what's going on. So at the end of the day, the president knew like. I'm responsible for all of these people because as the leader and leadership, you're responsible for everybody. If you want to or not. So it was just a trickle down effect. Did the president know everybody was going to get fired and say, hold on, give me five minutes. I don't know. But what happened was everybody got moved. The coach, the AD and the president. Everybody got reassigned. Well, two got fired. The president got reassigned. And that was because, like, 
they were making too much money. He was probably in the contract. So we're going to reassign him back to a, a, a professor or a desk job or something. But we're going to get that face out of here. So it just goes back, you know, to what I was saying. So in recap, I'm going to read it again. All right. It says, your attitude ranks higher than your self-knowledge. It doesn't matter how smart or intelligent a coach or a leader is. If they have a piss poor attitude, they will not be able to lead anyone. It says, Competence is vital in leadership because people have to know that you know what you are doing before they will follow you. Highly competent people repetitively search for ways to keep getting educated, growing and improving. They do this by asking and finding out the most important question in development. Why? The person who knows why will eventually be the boss, while the person who knows how will always have a job. So do you think at Rutgers, that president knew that coach? Because I can assure you, somebody was talking about how he talks to the players. So if the president knows how the coach was, and you know the coach as a leader, you have to be able to go and pull that coach to the side, or you got to know your AD and say, listen, man, you need to talk to the coach. Or go yourself and talk to the coach and say, listen, I don't want this to get out of hand because what, you know, we've all heard it from our bosses, from our coaches, even from our parents, principals, whatever it is. I don't want it coming back to me. See, because people always say like CYA, right? Cover your butt, right? And you know what the A is, right? But it's an easy choice when people say you or me, you or me. But as leaders, can we prevent it so it won't be you or me? See, it's an easy choice. You or me. That's an easy choice. The 90% of the time, I'm going to choose me. But can you be a good enough leader to where you prevent and do everything you can to circumvent it being that choice of you or me? How can I get us both to knowing more, to educate ourselves more, to enhance ourselves more so that we can get the whole job done of taking care of moving what we got to move? Be it a basketball team, basketball players, companies, whatever that is. And so that's what it is. You know, it all starts with attitude. All starts with attitude. Attitudes are contagious. Is yours worth catching? So do I have anybody on the thread with any question, any question that they want to ask? Again, understanding life through the game of basketball. Okay, pick it up. 1999. You can pick this book up. Uh, I will drop the link in the comments. You can pick it up. Um, I have a bit.ly site. Um, bit.ly slash backslash bless the ball book or you can go to my website bless the ball sd.com and you can pick it up great book about coaching and leadership if you have a kid that plays basketball they need to read it so that they can understand oh you know sports so they can they can understand what things are necessary and how to view it from a Coaches standpoint, if you have coaches, if you're an AD or a teacher, a principal, whatever, right, you need to get it for your coaching staff because it gives them additional resources. All right. It gives them different strategies to know how to implement to make their teams and themselves a little bit better. All right? I don't have the, the end all and know it all to where I say you read this book, you're going to win a national championship. OK, maybe. Right. But they give you different strategies and different tools so that you can grow. If you're in the business sector. All right. We we just spent 43 minutes talking about how, you know, one passage, how it relates to basketball as well as life. And that's the, the vision of this show. 
That's the whole point of this show. So if anybody have any questions, any comments, please type them in the chat. Who y'all think gonna win the NBA Finals? Game one starts tonight. You know, we talk about attitude. You know, everybody know, or if you, you know, you know what happened to uh, uh, LeBron James, LA house, right? He, he got in the press conference, right? Had a pretty good attitude. You know, he could have got up there and like sent a lot of people off because he has that influence. But he kept his composure, right? He got good character about himself. You know, he, I would say kind of charismatic. You know, he didn't get up there to where people didn't want to talk to him. You know, he got up there and I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak eloquently, but I'm going to speak truthfully on this topic because someone needs to hear it. But let's see how his attitude reflects. Because, you know, I, I think he's a he's a good player, right? You know, I don't think he's better than Michael Jordan. You know, I'm not going to even get into that, you know, topic. Um unless somebody wants to, but um, I think he's going to come out with attitude like, okay, California, like I'm going to punish Golden State because y'all in California, and this is what happened to my house in California. That's just my personal attitude. Just watch how he comes out. Just watch the focus. Now, I could be wrong. And then his attitude determines everybody else. So now, what happens is the thing in basketball, we always say locker room talk, right? If you ever played a sport of any kind, you understand locker room talk. Don't give me something to post up on the wall in our locker room to where we can come in and we can look at it every day. And it just motivates us, gets us mad, gets us pissed off, gets us hungry and not being able to wait. So now we're going to come annihilate you. So see his attitude, again, talk about sending people off. He could have sent a lot of people off, but he can also send his teammates off in a good way, like because they follow him and he's a you know different type of guy, right? He's the best player, but he's the leader. And I was watching something the other day was talking about different styles. You know, he say like, you know, he can be the nice guy. He can be the butthole. He can be like the teacher. He can be the pastor. Like, you know, he can be the sportscaster. A lot of different roles that he has to play in his mind based on who his team is to get them to move in the direction in which they need to move. And he knows each individual. You know, why you think Cleveland got a different handshake like for every player? Like, they understand the individuality of who they are. So now, he could get his team to know, like, y'all know how I feel. Y'all can see it in my eyes, the hurt. And so they like, we coming out and we getting this for Brock. We going to come out and play hard because we know he wants us to play hard. Then on the flip side, you know, with Golden State, you know, it can be like, who's going to be that leader that's going to say they beat us last year? They beat us in seven, beat us on our home court. Now they're back for game one. So who's going to be that leader to say, you know what? Follow me. Follow my lead. Because it won't happen this year. That's how you figure. But with that being said, man, um, if we don't have any questions, any comments. You know, I, I definitely appreciate the ones that have shared this video um, with others, you know, you can definitely go and check out some, you know, I got some videos, some good stuff on my YouTube, uh, Bless the Ball SD. All right, Bless the Ball S's and Skill Deals and Development. Um, some good stuff on my YouTube. Go and subscribe to my YouTube, uh, Bless the Ball. And, you know, oh, before, how can I forget? We have a Father's Day camp coming up, June 16th. June 16th, we have, we have a Father's Day camp. Okay, for not just father and son, but it can father and daughter, father and son and daughter. All right, if someone wants to bring their niece, their nephew, we're having a great camp. First annual Father's Day camp. It's going to be held on Friday evening. 
All right, I have three packages, three price points. Okay, the first package you just get at admission and you get a t-shirt. All right, the second package you get admission, you get a t-shirt, you get a copy of my book, it, it will be signed, and then you get a free written workout plan for your kid or you, but you know, it's, it's just one, and it's general, you know, it'll be like a guard workout plan or, you know, po post workout plan. Um, and then the third package will be for, um, you will get everything. You will get the shirt, you know, at, at mission to the camp, you will get the workout plan, you'll get the sign book, and you also get a, a upload of the video of the camp. So, you know, Christmas time, whenever you can go back, you know, y'all can pop it in, put it on, you know, pull it up on YouTube, you know, your YouTube page, wherever you got it, show the whole family, like, this is when I went to camp with my son or with my daughter, or, you know, when I took my niece, my nephew, or if I'm a uh, men, men, mentor or somewhat, you know, some sort, this is where I took my um, mentee, you know, camp, and we had a great bonding experience. So for package one, is $50. All right, for package two, it's $75, and for package three, it's $125. Okay, so, you know, you can register at blessedtheballsd.com, the same place that you can get the book from and i will also put in um put that link in put the bitly link in as well as the link to um, the camp, and if you go to any of these Bitly links, um, I I do give away like three free gifts. Um, you just got to put your email in, and you know we send you um, three free gifts with that. You know, just for you know subscribing. Uh, to what we do. So I have all the links in, um, you know, where you can get the book, my personal website, as well as, um, you know, the Father's Day event and where you can just go and get you some free goodies. So take advantage of it. Uh, if it's not any questions, then um, that's it, good people. And we will talk next Tuesday. We'll recap. Uh, a couple games of the finals, and we will get into the coaching um, qualities. There's three coaching qualities I'll probably touch on, too. All right, until then, uh, we still have room for our, you know, group trainings, personal trainings, um, individual trainings. Uh, we do all of those things. If you need help getting in college, um, getting in school, scholarships, we do all of those things. Go check out our website. Till then, um, I always say, Work and practice your best because there's somebody somewhere in the world that's going for the same position as you, and they're working, and you may not be. And when they find you, they're going to beat you out unless you're working hard. So go work hard because that's not an option. All right? That's non-negotiable. Working hard is non-negotiable. Get to the point to where you work as smart because you understand why you're working. All right? Peace out, people. Deuces.